Okay. Oh, okay. Hey. <laughs> so on Instagram, you could hear us starting to sweat a little bit. On we have, we are technically impaired. Yes, to say the least. But we are giving it our all. And um, what's uh, what's on the schedule today? Today we're going to talk about once again fall and the importance of following Mother Earth and the natural cycles that God set in place uh, for us to follow to to live the most in most vitality. I can't get my words out today uh, that we can possibly live in. You know, there's two times a year that Ayurveda says it's really important to cleanse and those two times of years are the times that it's um the seasons of transitions and the two seasons of transitions are spring uh -huh. and fall yes <laughs> she's You're thinking, learning something she's after thinking all. she trained me right i did i did i'm proud of you <laughs> so that has nothing to do with bathing twice a year right the cleanse no, that's true. It's an inter well, it's actually in like our dragonfly plan. We take it very deep, our cleanses. It's not just about a physical cleanse. We do a physical cleanse, a material cleanse, and a spiritual cleanse. So we hit the tripartite being and we take it all the way with the cleansing. So we're very serious about our cleansing. We are very serious. <laughs> I am serious about everything, as you can tell. So um, it is fall. Yes. The leaves are starting to turn colors everywhere but Florida and Southern California. Yes. And um, so, so let's talk about the fall cleanse. So we have a we have a program going on now. The yes. Fall cleanse. Yes. But you can join any time, by the way. So it's not just just because we've started it. You can join the cleanse at any time. Uh, you can also join the cleanse if you're feeling depleted and you need a, a reboot. You can join the cleanse anytime. So it's in the way we have it programmed is you can do it anytime you want to. But the main times to do it are spring and fall. So okay. it's still plenty of time to do the cleanse. Okay, good. So if we say we did a spring and a fall cleanse or we miss the fall cleanse and someone's feeling a little lethargic, feeling a little full, a little unmotivated like after thanksgiving holiday or christmas dinner or fourth of july all the celebrations Day, absolutely easter yes uh, where New we've Year's. overindulged and overindulged for a period of time too i mean uh, generally during these seasons if you work outside of the home there's parties going on you start to overindulge way yes. before just like one family dinner so if you're feeling toxic yes. from overindulging, or if you've been under a lot of stress of, on your in your life, and you have not been good to yourself, because we all fall off the wagon. It's just human nature. You can just fall off and get uh, start eating like McDonald's, processed foods. Uh, you've been in a hurry. Life has been hectic. I mean, we went through a season ourselves, even you know taking care of your parents that we weren't. Even though we were fixing healthy meals and all that, the stress level was so much. Mm -hmm. We were missing out on a lot of exercise yeah. uh, because of the stress. So, so if your life has not been balanced and you're feeling out of balance due to the hecticness of life, then that is another time to do a reboot and do uh, the dragonfly cleanse. So. Yeah, because we are connected. Spirit, soul, body. Yes. Everything that affects us emotionally will affect us physically and spiritually. Everything that affects us physically will yes. affect us emotionally, spiritually. Everything that affects us spiritually will affect us. Emotionally. And physically. physically. Yes, Again. because physical symptoms will show up as emotional. Uh, physical issues will so show up as an emotional issue. Yeah. Uh, same thing, emotional issues like depression, anxiety, that all can manifest as physical pain in the body too. You know, I was, I was just reading this week where um, uh, uh, about stress. Because uh, with with my job, part of what I do is uh, is counseling. A lot of what I do is counseling, and a lot of people right now are still experiencing stress and anxiety and some depression and that kind of thing. I was reading that uh, if you exercise or or even just take a, a walk, fifteen minutes a day, three or four times a week, you can reduce your stress level by twenty five percent. Yeah. So I'm done for today. Go ahead. Yeah. Okay. Well, I just realized we're on the wrong Instagram account. 
We are. Yes. <laughs> I just looked up there and realized that. But okay. um, let's just go with it. And, uh, well, uh, it's just not going to be on the right Instagram account. But <laughs> it's on my personal Instagram account. But, oh, well, we're just going to go with it because that's obviously the way it was supposed to be. All right. So let's talk about fall, though. Fall, we are now in full fall. Now, we live in Florida, in case you don't know. That's why I'm dressed like no this. Fall. You've got you know, short sleeves on, but I'm always wearing tank tops and that sort of thing. Uh, but um, we're in fall here in Florida, believe it or not. So it's real important that we follow along with uh, the seasons and follow nature and what nature is doing. And so unfortunately, like we have protected ourselves with so much, like we've protected ourselves with a roof over our heads, with big walls. We've built this protection around ourselves. So the more protection we get, because we're trying to be um, save money by you know, air conditioning all that, so you put lots of insulation in your walls. We are putting more and a more barrier between us and Mother Nature or the Earth, the divine laws that God set in place. And when we we disconnect from that, we are missing out on a great opportunity to watch and learn and do just like we're supposed to live. And so with that being said, that's why in Ayurveda, we say, get outside, walk in nature, go outside every single day, get out there, walk on the earth and pay attention when we're doing it. So often, you know, like when we're running on the trail out here, we are blessed that we get to, we live by the legacy trail. And so we're blessed that we get to go walk and run and bike on that trail every day, or we can go to the beach and walk and run and bike the yeah. islands. And so we're very blessed that we get to see but what I see so often is that people have earphones in, they're not paying attention, or they're yeah. talking on yeah. the phone, or they're texting and walking, and they're not paying a bit of attention to what Mother Earth or God has to teach us, right? And so well, if we were paying attention right now, even in Florida, I was looking at our back tree. You built us that's not a little area to sit outside. And I was sitting there looking at the, the back tree and all its leaves are starting to fall off. So even here in Florida, we are having our fall. Just pay attention. It doesn't feel like fall, but no. the earth is still going through the falling mo fall motions. And that would be the trees are dropping. The, the earth is, or the, environment is getting drier the wind has picked up here and so things are changing and shifting and so what we need to do is we need to look at, at the earth and what she is doing and follow along and adjust our life as well just like the earth is adjusting we need to adjust what the well the along with it one of the things that um you know we said we've said this for years one of the things that drives us crazy is that that old saying is, I've heard you say this a million times, well, I've always done it that way. And that gets us into more trouble mm -hmm. if we don't shift and change with the seasons, not only of the seasons of the earth, but with the seasons of our lives, that we're going to grow stagnant and we will not be living optimally. Yeah. You know, that can be said about anything that can be said about our personal lives. That can be mm -hmm. said about our business. Um, when I, when I used to pastor, it was one of the sayings that, that I would say to our congregation or to our boards is, is listen, the seven last words of a dying church are we've never done it this way before. Seven last words of a dying business are we've never done it this way before. Uh, seven last words of a person who is, who is becoming stuck, who is, I don't, I don't want to say the word dying, but we're becoming stuck or in a rut is I've never done it this way before. Well, life calls us to change. And when change takes place or for change to, to take place, we have to embrace change and we have to embrace the fact that maybe the way we used to do it is not the best way to do it anymore. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because we're always evolving, right? There's always new things to yeah. do, new things to try. And though, you know, I've always said when I become an old woman and that's kind of, that's a, a long, long time, ways a off long time from now. <laughs> One of the things that I always set, envisioned is if I'm sitting on my front porch rocking in my rocking chair, I don't want to have the statement come out of my mouth. I wished I would have. I'd rather have the statement come out of my mouth of, well, I wish I hadn't have done that, but hey. <laughs> 
<laughs> at least I gave it a try. It, it led us to where we are, right? Absolutely, absolutely. So we learn from our mistakes, and that causes us to evolve and become yeah. better humans. So mistakes are a good thing. Yes. So let's talk about fall. Sure. The whole thing is some fall is is we want to make sure, and I wrote a blog on it. So if you'd like to go and check it out, it's not published right at this moment, but as soon as the broadcast is over, I'll click the little publish button. So dragonflyayurveda.com over here. Um, go check that out. Hit the top. It's called hit the blog and uh, this will be on here all this information so if you want to print it off feel free to so what we want to talk about is fall elements so we're all made up of elements all the five elements and so fall is mainly made up of ether and air it's vada season so we're we want to really make sure we're grounding vada and if you don't know what that is no big deal no worries um, we're going to talk about just how to feel your best during this fall season. So one of the qualities, we, we always look at quality. So if we've got, it's the season is cool, dry, light, and a little rough, it's windy. So we wanna op introduce the opposite qualities. So I don't know what you're doing, but we wanna go right here to comment. <laughs> So in case somebody wants to talk to us and then we can answer them. Okay. <laughs> He's just, pushing just buttons. Put the banner, banner bigger. <laughs> it was you need a bigger banner, huh? Yes. Okay, so um, are you never mind. So 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 the qualities that we want to introduce are warming, grounding, moist, rhythm and routine, because fall is a little erratic. And so we want to bring in rhythm to calm the erraticness. So we always want to think about coming in with opposite qualities to balance out the current qualities. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So we want to reduce cold, mobile, or which means doing too much. So rhythm means routine, getting in a rhythm of things. But, and that's good, but we want to reduce doing too much at this time. We want to reduce the erraticness of our lives and you know right Sounds now it, it really does sound good and we're not going to get into politics but right now we're we're what a week or so away from election two weeks away yes and we're knee deep in anger everywhere yes and so there is a lot of erratic and chaos activity going on so it's real important to stay balanced during this time so step back take a breath knowing that we know who's in charge meaning we have a higher power in charge. So it doesn't matter who gets president. It really doesn't, folks. Just step back and take a breath and go with the flow, no matter what happens. So just breathe and know everything is just as it should be, right? Right. And it's not, and let me, I, I, you know, that you're, I know that you're not saying it doesn't matter because it, it matters to most people. Everybody that's going to vote, it matters to. Mm -hmm. But in, in balance of that statement, is that there's there's more at work here. There's yes. more behind the scenes. There's more that make up who we are and what we do than just the president of the United States. Absolutely. And it's important to be active in what you believe in. Sure. So go out and not saying step back and don't do anything. No, go out there and be active in what you believe in that let go of the attachment mm -hmm. to it. So go do, be kind. And let go of the results, the res attachment to the results. Yeah. Let it go. And it's all good. But you've done your part. That's your dharma in the scheme of things. You've done your part. And you can sit back and let whatever is supposed to take place happen. Remember, resistance, anytime you're resisting, resisting, you're going against your own nature. And it's not healthy. So go with the flow. Do your part. And let it go. Surrender is not always a bad thing. There are times when we simply surrender for the sake of peace yes. of mind, peace yes. of heart. And so be led by your heart. Yes. But surrender the outcome and the, yes. the response itself. Absolutely. So one of the things, uh, so how can we, do you know how we can recognize some signs and symptoms that particularly in fall that we might be able to recognize to know that we're out of balance? So with the qualities what? I just said about fall, <laughs> what would you guess that might be some signs and symptoms that you physically might be out of balance? Constipation is always a symptom of being out of balance. Mm -hmm. But with it being Vata season and the season is drying, we are at more prone to being constipated. 
So irregular gas and bloating is another symptom of being out of balance. Dry skin and anxiety. So with that in mind, we have a tendency to, to in this season to be this way. And then you add the extra added tension that's happening in the United States politically. And then you've got a, like a, double whammy right so that's why it's real important to ground yourselves and and apply these rules to live optimally keep going all right so taste is taste to <laughs> enjoy <laughs> we're just with it aren't we <laughs> taste to enjoy this season so we want to we're gonna do if you notice too so 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 i gotta ha indulge in a little personal story here so um, we've been cleaning out my mother and father-in-law, his mom and dad's house, and uh, I ran across her recipe box. And I love old recipes. I love them. But in, in that generation, they used a lot of what she has oleo everywhere. I forgot that's what you used to call margarine yeah. and Crisco. So if you find old recipes that have been passed down through the family and they're using those ingredients, just change them up. You can you, you can take about any recipe and make it appropriate. Al although the recipe that I made, <laughs> no matter what you did with it, it was not going to be healthy. But I asked, so just change out the oleo with real butter or ghee, even better, and then change well, change out the Crisco with ghee because that's the with oil. Four pounds of sugar to half of that. But use uh, good raw sugar. Um, but yes, but unfortunately, this this particular recipe, he is like, if you find heavenly brownies, I want mm. you to make heavenly brownies. Yeah. And I found it. And no matter what I could, I used all real ingredients. That's the main thing. Used real ingredients Ooh. in it. But man, oh man, were we like on a sugar high and then a sugar We're, we're good until Christmas cookies come We out. are good. We're, <laughs> we're like... So, but that just made me think of the sweet. We have a tendency during this time. Yeah. Notice your tendencies because you're instinctual. If you will pay attention, your body will start to tell you what it needs. And we were kind of instinctually going towards sweets. That's a natural thing to do during the fall yeah. season. We're trying to balance out the dryness of the season. So sweet, bitter, and astringent in early fall. And then when we move into late fall, salty and sour are good taste to enjoy during those seasons to keep us balanced. Taste is medicinal and taste keeps us balanced. You know, the first uh, part of our digestion starts in our mouth. And so it's real important for taste to be a part of that. And they say in Ayurveda that if we're using all um, all six tastes in our meals that we will walk away feeling very satiated. Just, six tastes. Oh, okay. Uh -huh. Yes. For more time. Yes. So lifestyle changes that we want to incorporate during this season is we want to use warm, medium bodies, bodies of oil, such as almond, sunflower for your morning massage. And now if you have an Abiango oil that you're using, and you love it and it feels good and nurturing to you, stay with that. Otherwise, a good almond or sunflower or, um, oil for your morning massages. In Ayurveda, we believe in the morning oil massage. I would love a morning massage. Yep. This, this, is, um, this is not like me getting you down and rubbing on you. This is <laughs> this is normal morning routine oh, in Ayurveda called Abhyanga Oil Massage. Yes. I know what now, that is. Now, with that being trying. said, if you do go to a massage therapist, take your oils with you and have him or her massage you with those oils too. Um, use sesame oil on your feet. If you're cold and dry or you're having trouble going to sleep, put some nice warm sesame oil on the yes. feet and that that does wonders if your feet are as cold as my wife's put <laughs> two pair of socks on <laughs> that too <laughs> well you do want to put socks on if you do oil your feet because it can make greasy spots in your carpet you don't want that your or sheets. if you have tiled floors like we do it's slick or you can stain your sheets so put socks on cotton white cotton socks on consume warm foods and drinks and avoid skipping meals Establish regular meal times. Keep your ears covered in the wind and cold. So if it's if it's windy out, keep your ears covered. And I am a big advocate of oiling the ears, particularly 
uh, those, like one of the symptoms of high vata is ringing in the ears, tinnitus. Mm -hmm. And so one of the things, if it's not medication related, you could, you might be able to, to actually cure it if it's not medication related or disease related. You can actually cure it by uh, putting, I use Nisaya oil, the same oil that I use in my nose. I'll put it in my ears. As, uh, with this fall season, I've been having the ringing in the ears, which tells me my vata is uh, going, is too high. And so I'm grounding and oiling as much as possible. So try a little um, Nisaya oil or sesame oil in the ears. And that's wonderful. And you can put almond oil in there as well. Um, it, wear, of course, warmer clothing as the temperature begins to drop and then stay hydrated by drinking warm water. You know, we even today I caught you. Uh, uh, he knows this. Ice drinks are not good for you. Uh, Ayurveda, we don't like ice drinks. We like room temperature drinks. And caught him today go, going down the road with this ice water and uh, Yes, I didn't say juice. anything. Iced apple juice. Yes. And so we would prefer room temperature, especially during this time of transition. We want to keep that Agni fire stoked in that well, belly. Yes, but to pat myself on the back, for meals, I do drink room temperature water. Yes, you're doing good. Because that was a hard thing it for you to do. It was hard to break after 30 years of, yes. 40 years of sweet We tea. get programmed where we think we have to have iced tea ice in our drinks and it's a programmed thing and so just remembering to just start eliminating i i have never been an ice drink person simply because and i i think i think this is a fortunate thing in this particular case i have sensitive teeth and so cold things um hurt my teeth and so i've never even as a kid i didn't want to drink iced beverages because it hurt my teeth and I couldn't eat ice cream either because I couldn't bite into it, but I could lick it, but I couldn't bite into it. So um, so just try to start weaning yourself into room temperature beverages and it makes a world of difference, especially during this time of transition. Now, if we were in the heat of summer and you're in Florida, sometimes you need the, some really cooled beverages to, to put out that heat because if we're running and it's hot out there, and believe me, it's very hot here. Um, sometimes you need to cool off. And yes. so there's always exceptions to the rule. Um, if you suffer from allergies, uh, you know, our little dog, he he's suffering from itchy allergies. Something's blooming out there, and he's itching now. And But uh, for humans... We can't neti pot surf. I, don't know, I heard him in here. He just climbed under the bed. Oh, did he? So I heard him in here. But um, so we can't neti pot our dog. But if you suffer from allergies, uh, please neti pot. Keep your nasal cavities uh, clean. I want to reinforce this again. We are headed normally into the flu and cold and flu season. Right now, during the time of this filming, we're still talking about COVID and coronavirus all over the place. So naturally, we want to do what we would naturally be doing, and that is keeping our nasal cavity clean. Because if it's full of mucus, guess what? We get bacteria. And it virus. Yes, it. We are made to breathe in and breathe out bacteria and viruses. And if we have mucus in there and a fissure, an opening in our nose because the environment's dry, because we got right now we have the air running. I know where you. If you're located anywhere other than Florida, you might have heat running. Regardless, if you have heat or air running in your home, you've drawn out your environment. Yep. So you put your nose at risk for a fissure, which is a little opening in the nasal cavity. So it is imperative that you, if going into cold and flu season, that you're eating good, warm, unctuous, nutri nutri nutrient-dense foods, and you're you natty potting your nose so that you don't create a little environment to start growing a little viral farm, a little COVID farm there in your nose. Think about it. That makes perfect it sense, does. right? It so does. so we want to keep that nose clean and we want to keep it moisturized by oiling it. So very, very important. And I cannot stress the importance of that one. All right, so let's talk about, did you have something to say? I heard no, you I just, it, it, it's, you, breathe. you know, you know I, and I, not that I didn't know this already, but you reminded us that 
our, our mouth is actually the beginning of the digestive problem. So the nose would be the beginning of res wow. the respiratory. Yes. Um, so the fissures in the, in the nose mm -hmm. would, would be the quickest way for something to get it to our system. Yes. Have you ever been hit in the nose? Yes, it bleeds a lot. Yes, it breathes. Your nose is very, very vascular. And that's why everyone thinks they're dying if you've ever had a bloody nose. <laughs> <laughs> I kid you not. Or a little, little cut, you know, our head, our scalp is very vascular too. So a little cut on the scalp will do the same thing. But talking about the nose, if you've ever been hit in the nose and it bleeds and you cannot get it stopped, you think, oh my goodness. And, you know, in ER, out. we had a lot of people running to the emergency room because they thought they were bleeding to death because a lot of blood comes out if you get punched in the nose. So you will you realize then how vascular the nose is. So that's how it gets right into the bloodstream. If you've got a little opening in your nasal passages and a virus gets in and it gets into one of the, and it'll go right into the vascular area, that's right into your bloodstream and there you go. You've inhaled and now you are a host for a virus. Yeah. And so that's, I don't know why in, in allopathic or Western medicine, they teach hand washing, hand washing, hand washing. They, when they took in the science of Ayurveda, because allopathic medicine is all Ayurvedic based, they threw out the things at the time that they incorporated, Ayur, they pulled in Ayurveda and then built on it, is they pull, they left things out because at the time, scientific technology had not advanced right now as time goes on and, and technology advances it proves proves even more the efficacy of ayurveda um, but they they leave out things that we can't scientifically prove which is a shame because just like our eyes don't have the ability to see all the colors that there are to see we are limited in our sight but we believe that if that's the way we see it, everything is seeing it that way, and that's not the case. Science is the same way. Science is only capable of, of proving what our base knowledge is. And as our base knowledge improves and science improves, it is ever-changing as well. So it also proves the efficacy of yeah. Ayurveda. So as we, as we enter more of the cold and flu season, mm -hmm. I know you've, You've blogged on this before, but it'd probably be a good idea to, uh, at the season, to put another blog on just the importance of taking care of our nose. Um, you know, just that alone, hand washing and neti potting and acai oil. Now, with the neti pot, though, it is saline water, so it can dry out the nasal passages. Mm -hmm. So if you're like me, I don't neti pot every day. I maybe even neti pot sometimes just once a month, but I use rose water on a Q-tip. I dip a Q-tip in rose water and clean my nose out in every day with my rose water. And then I follow with the Nasaya oil. So if you don't like neti potty, not, not a thing wrong with it. There's always ways to get around that. And rose water is fabulous for that. Any questions? No, Rose And if you have any nice. questions, by the way, that if you're watching and you have questions, please let us know and we'll be glad to answer any questions. All right. So where was I? Fall food, guys. Um, let's see. So foods to favor. So one of the things I listed is a, like a shopping list, and I've got this on the blog. So when you go to the store and – we want to favor warm, moist, slightly oily, and building in, of course, nutrient-dense foods. And so I always say the best thing to do in a grocery store is to do the outer aisles. Don't go in the aisles. Do the outer aisles because those are usually the fresh produce and all that. So here's our problem with the with with most with us in the United States, we are so spoiled because we can go to the grocery store and we can just buy whatever we want, right? Pretty much because it comes they comes in from all over the world and they so it is hard to determine I mean yeah there's pumpkins in the in the stores right now and more squashes there's pomegranates in the stores but for the most part you can get a lot of these items anytime you want them because we can have access from everything all over the world now but so what I want you to be aware of is your seasonal fruits and vegetables, what is in season and go for those things. And one of the ways to do that is like we, we were um, 
the Green Door Organics, which was a veggie basket that's from locally produced farmers. If you are can get with a um, co-op and do a vegetable co-op that use these farmers that are local, then that's your best bet that you don't even have to even guess what's local. It's in your bag and you get what's seasonal and local in your bag. That is the best option. The other option too is your local farmer's market. Yeah. But be careful with the local farmer's market because I've been to some and they have brought in like other stuff that wasn't local or seasonal. And so, so make sure you know who you're buying from in the farmer's market, make sure they're a local farmer and you know, your farmers and how, how your food is produced. So organic uh, foods, uh, you know, even genetically modified foods, just about every vegetable we get, even organic vegetables have been genetically modified, unfortunately. So, so with that being said, a lot of people believe that raw foods are the most healthy and Ayurveda has always said this, and this is even more important. I believe now because we've genetically modified our foods and by what that means is like, unless you're eating an heirloom fruit or vegetable, then you, it has been genetically modified to the point that they're trying to make it more disease resistant and pest, pest resistant, so drought, disease, and pest resistant. So what we did is we made a stronger, more hardier plant. So fine, but that means that it's harder for us to digest. Mm -hmm. Now, heirloom fruits and vegetables, a little bit more easier to digest because they are in its most natural state. But again, those are harder to come by because they're harder to raise and produce in mass quantity. And we, as the American people, we the farmers need to be able to produce to be able to make money. So that's understandable. So make sure that you're cooking your vegetables, uh, even if it's just lightly steaming them. We want to break them down enough where our bodies can uh, metabolize the nutrients. So does the genetic modification change the nutrient level? You know, um, in, in, so, so there's genetic modifications being done on foods that are quite scary. So, so in that case, so stay away, go for anything that says non-GMO. Unfortunately with that though, and that's what I was trying to get at, even the non-GMO, unless it's heirloom, actual heirloom fruits and vegetables, it has been modified to some degree to help it produce more. So, so on, in some cases, the non-GMO is simply not modified again. After, yes. After the, the state that it's in. Yes. And if you grow your own fruits and vegetables and don't mind, cause they are extra, I tried it. Um, heirloom fruits and veggies are a lot. You, they take a lot more yeah. care. Heirloom tomatoes taste so much better than oh. any other tomato. Though. Yes, they do. And they're ugly too. They're all and ugly a, and ugly. And I'm not and, a and, tomato and eater, but I can, I can eat, eat it heirloom tomato and go, and this is so much better than any other tomato I've ever eaten. Yes. Yes. And, and so it's, so just keep those things in mind um, when you're shopping. So here's the things we want to look to, to favor. So foods to okay. eat during fall, root vegetables, such as sweet potatoes, carrots, turnips, parsnips, beets, and winter squashes. You know, a couple weeks ago, I posted some pumpkin recipes. I love pumpkin. So just go bonkers. But even I had pumpkin to chili. When we make chili, I add pumpkin to chili. Yeah. He but doesn't notice it most of the sauce time. Stuff that you made the whole the pasta. Yes, that was amazing. So True. it's a it's the what was that called? It's listed on it's in my Facebook and Instagram, uh, and I have it in the Dragonfly Plan and the membership as yeah. well. Uh, so that recipe is amazing. So please give it a try. It's wonderful and it's sweet too. It's sweet, yeah. so it satisfies a lot there. Um, so cooked cold winter. Uh, cold weather greens such as sea vegetables, collards, kale, and Swiss collards are good to consume. Warming spices such as cinnamon, ginger, cumin, fennel, and salt are good to cook with during this season. And warm spiced cow's milk, almond, or goat's milk is good. So uh, we ca I call it sleepy milk on my site. Uh, I have the sleepy milk recipe. Uh, a lot of Ayurvedic calls it golden milk and some call it um, spiced milk. So there, there's three different names for basically the same thing. 
All right, so raw or fresh roasted seeds and nuts is a really good thing to consume. If you'll look outside your window, I bet you'll see little squirrels out there running around gathering their nuts. Even here in Florida where they don't hibernate, they're still burying their nuts. I find them in my plants all the time and they're busy going through the motions, aren't they? So rich cold pressed oils such as coconut or sesame ghee is very important and avocado oils are very good. Moist grains such as white, brown rice and oats cooked with a little extra water are really good this time of year. And sweet or heavy fruits such as bananas, mangoes, which I love mango season. Mangoes are so fabulous. I love them. So, and that and pomegranates are in season right now. And pomegranates are fabulous. And if you don't know how to eat a pomegranate, let me know. I'll make a video on how to eat a pomegranate because pomegranates are fabulous, especially for ladies out there. Pomegranates are great for balancing the lady hormones. So it's good for the moon, Sweet. moon aspect. So they are wonderful. Pears also is in season right now. So feel free to indulge in those. Make sure that you keep your fruit separate though. Eat them as a snack or I like to consume them as breakfast. Uh, this time of year, you want to warm them if you consume it as a, as a breakfast. Uh, proteins from small legumes. So we want to eliminate large beans right now. Remember I said the quality of the season is windy and erratic and big beans, large size beans like kidney beans, the uh, lima beans, all those larger beans tend to produce more gas and invoke vata. And the smaller beans like adzuki, mung beans, um, what else? Uh, uh, split peas, they all tend to be a little easier to digest, particularly the mung beans. So go for those. Yes. Chana dal, I believe, is another one. Small beans, small beans, small beans. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so what foods to reduce. I'm going to talk about that. Foods to reduce is dry foods, such as chips and crackers. Remember, uh -oh. we want to counteract this quality of the dry season with more moist qualities. We also want to eliminate coffee and other forms of caffeine. Coffee and caffeine is drying mm -hmm. to the body, so that's why we want to eliminate those or decrease them as much as possible. Carbonated drinks, including bubbly or seltzer water, we want to eliminate those. Uh, and then, of course, I said earlier, large beans, canali, kidneys, pintos, uh, those increase the vata or the wind element. So we want to um, do that. So in my blog, I've included a shopping list. So you feel free to, to download that. It's a fall shopping list. And here's what we want to look for. Apples, bananas, cranberries, dates, figs, pears, pomegranates, and raisins for our fruits. And for grains, we want to shop for brown rice, oats, rolled in steel cuts, whichever is your per preference, rice, red rice, and wheat berries. Um, in beans, we want to look at black beans, azuki, mung, just look for the small beans. And then in fats, we want to go for avocados, coconut, coconut milks, raw cow's milk, eggs, goat milk, raw nut butters, raw nuts, and tahini. Right. So by the way, there's always a lot of questions on raw cow's milk. And I grew up <laughs> on a dairy farm, so it's just like second nature to me. And when somebody goes, what's a raw cow's milk? I'm like, oh, you don't know what that is? I think that's interesting. But then I realized not everyone most, grew up on a dairy farm. I do not know what raw milk, raw cow's milk is. Raw cow's milk is non-pasteurized milk. Now, depending on the state that you live in, and this is where it gets a little tricky, some states don't allow the sale of raw cow's milk, which is really sad, but there's politics behind that. It's simply politics behind that one. So we won't go into that. But what, what it is is that when you pasteurize milk, you lose the nutrients in it. You also break down the proteins in it, and that's why a lot of people are lactose intolerant because they can't digest the proteins in milk because it's been pasteurized. So when it comes to raw milk, that means simply milk that has not been pasteurized. I recommend finding a local dairy producer that's selling their raw milk and going for that route. Um, so when we're talking about raw milk, so when we lived on a dairy farm, we 
Um, we milked Holstein cows because those are good producers. But we always added in a Jersey cow. And it wasn't until I was adult and started studying Ayurveda how I realized how healthy those Jersey cows were for us. But the reason why we put in a Jersey cow in the herd is because her milk was higher in butter fat. And so it made our milk fat content come up, which you get paid on the content of your uh, mm. milk, which I find interesting. So, so with that being said, if you are lucky enough to find a Jersey cow farm that will sell you their raw milk, which we are fortunate enough that we have a local dairy called Jersey Acres, I believe, and they have Jersey cows and they sell their raw milk in our local um, health food store here. And so we are lucky enough to get Jersey cow milk. Jersey cow milk has a different protein in it than the other cow's milk. Mm -hmm. It's like an A1 or an A2 protein. I can't remember, like Holstein cows do an A1 A protein and Jersey's do A2, or I might have that reversed, I'm not real sure. But the proteins are just a little different in it. And the Jersey cow protein, we can eat. The chocolate to it. <laughs> yeah. Chocolate fixes make sure, everything. Make sure it's Ayurvedic chocolate. <laughs> so that's my little spiel on milk. Eggs is a good thing. Raw nut butters and, and uh, nuts, of course, of all kinds. Nuts and seeds and tahini. So spices we want to really uh, focus on this season is cardamom and cloves. Those are fabulous spices. And if you see my sleepy milk recipe, it has both those spices in it. And some of the extra things like cacao powder, which there's your chocolate. Yes. Coconut sugar, maple syrup, and of course we definitely want to nasal oil our noses and sesame oils for massages. And those are some of the things that we can incorporate into our life to help us into this transition into fall. Slow down, folks. I love fall. It's all good. You do love fall. Um, I love fall. I miss fall so bad. We both grew up in the Midwest. I grew up in Southern Illinois. She grew up in Southwest Missouri. Uh, I miss. Uh, I, I don't miss a whole lot about Southern Illinois, but I do miss the fall, the Midwest falls. I miss. The, the cool evenings and mornings and and the sound of leaves and, and walking through the leaves and the colors and all that kind of stuff. She could care less. I did not like fall, but I, it's, I'm learning. I've, I've learned a good lesson through Ayurveda. I realized I was resisting and creating more havoc on myself because I am a summer person. And that's why I do so well here in Florida because I love the warmth of the sun. I love it, it just, I love the warmth. It's I'm a high vata, but I'm also high pitta, so it can counteract on me. But fall was a time of, I knew that winter was coming. The, you know, what is that? Game of Thrones winter is coming. And that was like this, oh, winter's coming. Because I'm a big outdoors person. And I knew and when I was a kid, I knew it was a time that I wasn't going to be out on my horse as much. Now we always ride our horses in the snow and stuff, but I wasn't going to be able to get out as freely as I did in the summertime with my horse and certainly not spend the night outside with my horse. But, but yes, I did. I would love to go out. On, but anyway, I know. with that being said, a winter was a sense of doom and gloom for me. It was like, Oh, but now that I have grown up kind of, <laughs> I've realized through Ayurveda that my resistance was causing more havoc. And so going with this transitioning gracefully like we're supposed to, and that would make this transition into winter and embracing it. And really now that I'm older, the thought of getting to slow down is quite appealing. Very, actually very appealing and, and getting to read a good book and drink a warm cup of tea. And it's like, Oh, that sounds fabulous. And so now I understand why it's important to follow these rules. See, I looked when winter got here in the, in the Midwest, I looked at it as springs next. So spring was colorful. Spring had its own set of I nature love about spring. it. I love so spring. fall was my favorite, but spring was my next to the favorite. So, but you know, you learn to, you learn to love and, and live with what you got and go from there. I got a lot of good memories sledding and snowball fighting. And I did too. Stuff. My dad used to pull us around on a car 
did you did guys do that? I'll get on a car yeah. hood yep. and get a tractor out there and uh, I've got good memories. We would make use of what we had. So anyway, it's time we need to we need to wrap this up. So well, I hope this helped you with fall and transitioning into fall. I hope that you've learned something. Again, if you'd like to print out the information that I just discussed, I have written a blog on it. So feel free to go to dragonflyayurveda.com and uh, print out the grocery list and the recommendations, lifestyle and food recommendations for fall to help you live your most vital life during this time of the season of yes. transition. Yes. So once again, as we close, we simply want to speak a blessing over each and every one of your lives. All those who, who tune in later or, or live, uh, we just hope that you are blessed with love, joy, peace, uh, physical health and well-being, abundance of all things that you need and the spiritual awareness to know your value, your significance, and your purpose. Namaste. Namaste.